Good morning. Morning. Uh, week, our month, all kicked off kind of together here. Yeah, so glad you could uh, take a few minutes and spend them here as we uh, finish up today looking at uh, the much loved 23rd Psalm. And we come this morning again to the final verse and uh, verse that uh, brings uh, a lot of confidence and a lot of comfort uh, to us. As David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful promise, what a wonderful, uh, wonderful verse just by itself, uh, taken into context with the uh, remainder of the psalm. Again, uh, when I read the psalm, I can see taking uh, the statement, the Lord is my shepherd, and putting before each one of the uh, the statements in this psalm. And so, uh, because the Lord is my shepherd, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And because the Lord is my shepherd, I will dwell in the house uh, of the Lord forever. And uh, not on my own, not of our own merit, not of anything we have earned, uh, but because uh, the Lord um, is my shepherd. As we look at that verse, uh, it is, um, again, uh, talked about this as we started in this psalm, uh, the various opinions of when David uh, may have wrote the words, whether he wrote them as a young man uh, when he was tending to his father's fields and was serving as a shepherd himself and looked out across the fields and made this uh, parallel, this connection between the, the role of a shepherd and how God had treated him, uh, whether it was later in his life, uh, this verse would almost make you believe that, uh, that it was written uh, later in life. Uh, the other parts of the psalm, as he talks about being a shepherd, uh, kind of points you towards a younger David. This verse uh, would kind of point us towards maybe an older David. It's hard to uh, really know, but um, you can certainly see how uh, at this point, uh, David, in the later years of his life, uh, would have looked back over his life, would have surveyed his life, and there are quite a few psalms that we've already talked about uh, where uh, they have the appearance that, uh, that that's exactly what's happening, is that David is uh, looking back over his life and just uh, taking it all in and summing up uh, his, his life, and that at this point he uh, looked, uh, looked over his life um, and he could see uh, the faithfulness uh, of the good shepherd that God had never uh, left him uh, and that uh, that he was looking forward uh, to the future and that uh, so um, you know there again you could uh, I think you could probably take that and say maybe David was a young man saying that all of my life uh, looking forward uh, so it's really kind of uh, was David looking forward and saying for the rest of my life uh, surely goodness and mercy will uh, follow me or was David at the end of his life looking back uh, and uh, saying that surely goodness and mercy would follow him. And so uh, either way, uh, the good thing about that is no matter where you are in life, uh, we can read that and, and uh, identify uh, with, that, uh, with that promise. And the word um, surely uh, that he puts in there, we'll just start there looking at the verse, uh, surely, uh, he, uh, I mean, if you, let, let's, let's take and do something you may not like doing, but just bear with me for a minute. Uh, you could take verse six and, and drop the word surely, and it wouldn't change the verse a great deal. You could still say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord uh, forever. But by inserting that word surely, uh, in uh, in the beginning of that verse, before that statement, David has uh, put in uh, th this one simple word uh, that um, removes any doubt, uh, removes any question. Uh, David has no concern, no fear uh, whatsoever. There's no uh, wondering. There's no hoping. Uh, but surely. Uh, it is obviously a word of confidence, a word of certainty, 
uh, David is positive uh, that God is going to continue uh, to guide him, that he could face the rest of his life. Uh, again, whether that was, if he wrote this as a young man looking at many years, uh, or whether as an older man, uh, wherever he was in life, he said, surely, certainly, uh, I can, uh, my, the rest of my days uh, will be blessed because uh, of my relationship uh, with uh, the Good Shepherd. And certainly, uh, David had had a lot of different occasions in his life uh, to get to know God. Uh, he had known God in good times. He had known God uh, in bad times. And even, uh, I think, one of the things that David ha has learned, uh, and I think one of the lessons we can learn from David's life, is even in the bad times, God uh, was still good. Uh, even in the bad times, the goodness of God uh, still had uh, went with him, even uh, when Saul pursued him, even when his son Absalom uh, rebelled. Uh, David, you know, even in the worst of times, uh, the goodness of God uh, had continued uh, to flow into uh, David's life. Uh, the goodness of God had continued to pour uh, into his life. Again, there, there were times when David uh, was, was running for his life, uh, whether it was from Saul or Absalom. There were times when he was um, going into battle when uh, no one in their right mind uh, would have given him uh, any chance whatsoever. As when he uh, faced Goliath, there's not a, uh, a person on earth that would have, uh, would have picked David to win that battle. Uh, and yet we see that over and over again, uh, whether it was in the death of his child, uh, which David went through, um, you know, David had some really terrible family things to happen, some problems in his uh, home uh, that were just horrendous, and yet he was still able to say that through all the days of my life, God has been good. Uh, his goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of his life. Um, and, and again, there, there are two words there that just stand out to me, and that's the word we already talked about, the word surely, uh, that David says certainly, positively, guaranteed, and then all. Uh, David says all the days uh, of my life. He, he is uh, he's saying no matter what went on, no matter how bad it may have looked, uh, I recognize uh, that God uh, was still uh, good. And let, let's think about that when David says, all the days of my life. That includes, when he says all, that includes the days when David was guilty of adultery. Uh, that includes the days when David was guilty of, uh, of, of murder. And, and yet, God, David says, God has still been good to me. Um, you know, one of the things I think, um, if you haven't learned, um, you probably will very soon, uh, is that um, we, we often think of God's goodness when everything's going right. What, what most of us learn uh, fairly quickly in life uh, is that God's goodness is the most apparent uh, when things are actually bad. Uh, that's when we, when we really notice uh, the goodness and, and experience uh, the, the goodness of God. And I think that's kind of what David is alluding to here when he says, all the days of, of my life. There, there have been a lot of days, again, when David's life, um, you know, it was going, you know, going, let's use, going sideways. Uh, I mean, it just was uh, going terribly. Uh, there, there were a lot of times, and yet God uh, had honored his covenant. Uh, God had continued to maintain um, his, uh, his position. Uh, David had cried out for mercy, uh, and God had repeatedly uh, shown David mercy. Uh, God's character uh, had not changed, and he, he had been true to that, and he had been true uh, to his word to David. And David says, I expect that uh, to, to continue uh, in the rest of my life as long um, as the Lord, up here in verse 1, as long as the Lord, Jehovah, uh, is my shepherd, I expect goodness and mercy uh, to follow me all the days uh, of my life. 
And you know, I think one of the things that a lot of people mistakenly um, have the perception is that when things are going bad, uh, that somehow God is not good. Um, and again, I think the truth is uh, that um, as we mature, as we get wiser, as we get older, uh, what we learn is it was during those times that God was at his best, um, that God was being uh, showing the most good, uh, the most mercy uh, that he had ever shown. Uh, again, I, I think about, um, I, I, I ought to memorize it. I, I talk about it all the time. The, uh, you, you've seen, I'm sure, the plaques hanging up, talking about the footprints in the sand where uh, the man had to dream and he saw the one set of footprints and he said, Lord, I th thought you'd always be with me. And he said, I, I was. Those were the times I carried you. Uh, and, and I think that's kind of what David's referring to. And, uh, and, and I hope you understand that and you, you've experienced that in your life, uh, that even when it seems like, you know, when everybody else may look and think uh, of your life, of your situation, uh, kind of like Job when, his, you know, when people came to him and said, curse God and die, um, David knew um, that that was when the shepherd uh, showed him uh, his love and that he was going to uh, continue to follow him. And I will dwell uh, in the house of the Lord forever. You know what David says? David says, because I know God is good, um, I'm not. I, I'm not leaving. I, I, I'm not turning. You know, uh, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not turning back on. Uh, oh my God! Now at this point, I've uh, come uh, too far. Uh, he's been with me through too much, uh, and I'm. I'm not about uh, to walk away uh, and, uh, and and turn my back. Um, on God. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful thought as we, as we look at this psalm. Um, the, the, the privilege uh, as we look at this psalm uh, of what it means to be uh, one of the good shepherd sheep. Uh, that we have all these promises. And if God's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, uh, he did those things for David. That's the kind of shepherd he was for David. Then you and I can start this week. We can go through today knowing that that's still uh, who our good shepherd is. That's still a shepherd uh, that we have. And uh, why wouldn't we want to be? Uh, why would anyone not want to be in the flock of God, to be, to be in his uh, to be in his flock and to have him uh, as shepherd. Why would anybody want to walk through this life uh, unprotected, uh, unguarded, unled? Um, I'm not even sure that's a word, uncared for, uh, when we can have a, a good shepherd who leads us in uh, green pastures and still waters, who restores our soul. Um, who gives us this promise as David gets to the end uh, and says, now I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, I think one of the things David is saying is he's going back and he's looking at all these things that he said down through here, that he's lying in green pastures, drinking at still waters, his soul's being restored. And he says, now I'm going to enjoy that forever. Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in that, uh, in that role uh, forever. You know, my hope for you today is that you know the Good Shepherd, uh, is that you have a relationship uh, with him, uh, that you have that, that you can say uh, with David and say with confidence, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you're a child of God, if you're one of his sheep, if he's your shepherd, uh, you can go through the day with your head held high, with a smile on your face, no matter what comes along, no matter what the doctor says, no matter what your boss says, you can go through this life knowing uh, that you're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But if for some reason today, uh, you don't know him as your Savior, you don't know him uh, as the Good Shepherd, I wish you'd give me a call, shoot me an email, and put a comment uh, underneath uh, the post this morning, and uh, so you and I can talk, uh, and let me tell you how you can know Jesus Christ as your Good Shepherd. You have a great day, I hope this helps you go through today uh, with a smile that surely goodness and mercy uh, are with you and following you all the days of your life. See you tomorrow.